I told Draper that he can't keep working at that kind of pace, but I don't think he's in the mood to uh, listen to a, a voice of reason right now. Well, ever since Seward, Paxton, and Whiteside withdrew their offer, he's been burying himself in his work, hasn't he? Well, I suppose he's trying to prove that they made a mistake in rescinding that job offer by taking every case that comes along. Honey, I should think that Draper is confident enough to know that he's really a very good attorney. Oh, sure, but being rejected is a big disappointment. So if he wants to bury himself in his work for a while to ease the pain, I'm not going to stop him. Would you like a drink? I think I do. Good idea. Uh, Mike, you know, you might keep an eye on him. It wouldn't do any good for his health to suffer. Oh, I'm not going to let it go that far. The minute I see any change in the quality of his work, we'll have a nice long chat. I don't want his reputation to suffer. Really, Mike, I, I wish that this whole business with that law firm uh, never, ever happened because it's, well, it's been more trouble than it's worth. Well, I agree with you, Nancy, but uh, I don't think we've heard the last of Seward Paxton and Whiteside. Matter of fact, I received a letter from Philip Seward today. Kind of a strange letter at that. Really? What does it say? Well, he's going to be in Monticello, and he wants to see me. Oh, another little expedition to offer you a senior partnership again? <laughs> I already turned that down once. He knows that. Yes, but now that they've decided against Draper, if the offer is still there, do you think that they might open negotiations with you again? No. Seward's letter suggests the topic of conversation is going to be Draper. Well, honey, when you do see him, would you please give him my two cents worth? Oh, what would you like me to tell him? I think it was very insensitive of them to turn Draper down without giving him any reason whatsoever for their change of heart. Well, I'm not going to have to broach that topic with Seward, Nancy. That's why he's coming to see me. Oh? Seward was a big supporter of Draper's, and he was very disappointed when Draper wasn't hired. He doesn't like the way the situation was handled. I see. He has a theory about why the firm turned down Draper. And from what his letter implies, an unhappy theory of that. Mike, maybe one of the other partners had a candidate and, and Draper just became the victim of internal politics? Nancy, uh, listen to a part of this letter. Mm -hmm. I want to assure you that at no time was any attempt on our part made to mislead Mr. Scott. Whatever indications I may have given Draper that the position was his were, to the best of my knowledge, accurate. I thought he was the logical choice to head up our criminal law division. When Draper and April visited us in New York, my opinion was reconfirmed by my partners. Draper made a wonderful impression, and the official job offer seemed to be a mere formality until Mr. David Henson had his day in court, as it were. Henson. Isn't that the partner who was in the hospital at the time of, of, of Draper's visit? Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know Draper, does he? No, but Mr. Henson put thumbs down, and that was that. Like that doesn't make any sense. I mean, how can you have an opinion about someone you don't even know? Apparently, Mr. Henson had done some checking on his own. And from what he learned about Draper, led him to believe that uh, Draper wasn't right for the job. Well, what kind of checking? I mean, did he talk to anybody here in Monticello? He wouldn't reveal his sources, but uh, the smoke began to clear a few days ago. When a uh, New York television station approached Seward Paxton and Whiteside about the possibility of handling some litigation for them, Seward recommended that the firm turn the work down because they didn't have anyone qualified to handle that type of broadcast law. But then Mr. Henson volunteered that he could do it. Seems that some years ago he had handled the legal affairs of a broadcasting executive named Margot Huntington. Who? Seward recalled that Margot was Draper's mother-in-law. My, what a small world, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Seward got the impression that not only was Margot uh, a client of David Henson's, but that they were also very close friends. Seward thought that was kind of uh, an odd connection. And frankly, Nancy, so do I.